Well, hello everyone. Uh, what would be, you, you guys look like you're really far away. Um, is it possible for you, each of you to introduce yourselves, have a bit of an idea about who you are, uh, where you're from, what kind of background you come from. And also I think later I'd like to know uh, what you'd like to hear from me because for what I, what I heard, was that you want to know a little bit more about me as a woman entrepreneur. So, um, so please go ahead. Uh, we can start. Yeah. Uh, I'm Alex. Um, I am American. Uh, I come from San Francisco, but I've spent the last four years in Switzerland. Uh -huh. My background is in the uh, creative agency world, uh, both large multinationals as well as small independent agencies. And most recently I've been working at a uh, consulting company focused on e-commerce and digital transformation. In Switzerland. Um, Hello, uh, my name hi. is Diana and maybe uh, I have heavily clicked on your LinkedIn profile the last week. So I'm your stalker, ignore <laughs> that please. Um, oh, I was really yeah, sad. That the, <laughs> I was really sad that the session last week didn't happen because I thought, especially you being a female entrepreneur and your story sounds really interesting. I was just looking forward to to listen to you and and to learn. My career is um, I like it to call it career because it makes me sound bigger. Um, started in advertising about. 26 years ago. Um, I'm the current chief creative officer of the DDB group in Germany, running nine different offices all across the country, and I'm responsible for the creative output. And uh, I'm, I'm German by location and by birth. It's not part of my identity. But if you prepared something in German, I'm the only one you can address it to, because <laughs> it happened over the past couple of weeks that people were throwing some German bits and pieces on, on the others and they do not understand. So uh, I'm, I'm the only one with a German DNA, but I traveled across the globe. I used to work in the UK in the beginning and then ended up in the States for a bit um, in feature animation. And now being back in advertising, I also moved back to Germany. And um, I'm from the very northern part of it, so I live in Hamburg right now. Oh, well, um, my name is David Slocum. I, we met very briefly uh, on Friday. Uh, I'm yes, uh, the um, I'm a faculty member at the Berlin School. Uh, was a longtime academic director, and uh, I will just lend uh, my individual and also institutional apology to you for uh, uh, what uh, the, are not being able to uh, receive you uh, on Friday and, and also my great thanks for your making time today. So I won't um, take up more of our time because I know that the group very much wants to hear from you, but uh, as I do, uh, but I wanna thank you and uh, look forward to uh, this session. Nothing to uh, somewhere that might have come across what in your interactions with people uh, is that whilst we are enormously uh, attached to who we are and what we come from, uh, not that we know too much about it ourselves, but there just seems to be a kind of a, you know, muscle memory about, about that. Um, the, at the same time, it's extremely open culture. It, uh, it welcomes uh, all sorts of influences, but what it does is it, it sort of it, it creates its own vocabulary and own language. You know, it, um, for example, you would have heard about Jugad, you know, uh, which is this sort of frugal innovation, uh, you know, where it's a can-do attitude and which is, you know, comes from a certain sense of, you know, the, the, the positive perspective, the, the positive psyche the Indian people seem to have inherited from their ancestors. So um, it, it, there seems to be this attitude that no matter what the difficulty, we will always somehow manage uh, to overcome that. So that's, that is uh, always helps. But having said that, you know, I think the economy itself has seen huge shifts. Uh, we were a nation which was hugely subjugated by several 
uh, invasions, uh, uh, you know, from initially from uh, the, the Islamic world, and then of course the colonization from, from England, and that decimated our economy to quite an extent. It was really a civilization that that uh, that was interrupted, you know. And uh, having said that, being the kind of a uh, you know open secular kind of people that we are, we absorb just about everything. The fact that I'm speaking to you in English, uh, it comes from from that that historical background, you know. So it's all right. We do that, you know. Having said that. They tell me Indian. I mean, you know, you, we, we, we sometimes force companies who come into India to actually change their offering, or change their menus, change the way they, they service us, because we're just so stubbornly so, you know. Um, so the economy seems to be shifting hugely because as you well know, are aware right now, uh, we've actually positioned to be a number three economy or number two economy within a few within not a very long span of, of time. We seem to have already uh, crossed the, um, you know, we are, we, are, we are actually, it's kind of an ironical statement to make, but we're actually a bigger economy today than, than what UK has to offer, you know, and that is within 75 years of, uh, of uh, coming out of uh, colonization. So, uh, so that's just a bit of an idea about the, the, the confidence of this country and where it's going, and which means that it's ripe for innovation. And uh, the number of patents that have been filed uh, recently are, I think, phenomenal. I don't exact, I don't have the exact number, but you know, it, it seems to be really a rapidly growing uh, scenario for for India. Uh, the the amount of startups that we have are again extremely wide ranged, and um, uh, in terms of the services they're offering, very insightful and very very scalable. Uh, not just within India, but also also abroad. So I think that it comes from a, a, a transformation from a, like a post-colonization post-coloni- transformation that India is seeing greater confidence in who we are and the fact that the economy is actually be going into a sweet spot for us. So I think that that is truly a recipe for, for a lot of innovation, a lot of creativity, which is also an in, in, innate element of, 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 of Indians, you know, the, the number of young people who are already entrepreneurs or aspiring to be entrepreneurs is huge. I think some of, I'm sure you've been, uh, they've shared the demographics of, of this country that the amount of, the number of youth, uh, especially Gen Z, seems to be, you know, uh, uh, a huge pool of people and they bring in with them the, uh, their their own exposure to the world. They are digital first children. They are people who are rooted in India, but they're willing to experiment. Uh, they take positions in life. They, they own philosophies, they fight for it. And that's an interesting, interesting recipe for, for great success is what I would, I would say is where India is poised at the moment. In, in, in softer terms, India has already influenced, uh, you know, I mean, when I say softer things like yoga, spirituality, and these have become, uh, you know, very large influences, and they have themselves taken a life of their own. I mean, yoga, as we know in India, is very different from yoga, as we know in the Western world, for example, you know, it's sort of, it, it, it's, it's, it's been re-looked at and modified and so on. And I think we're going to see much more of that. But I think what 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 is going to happen uh, is, you know, the post-industrialized world reached us late because obviously because of all the colonization and so on. Also, we went into a socialist economy, and it's only rather recently, I think, only in the late '90s or mid '90s, that we opened up our economy. Uh, so I think a lot of the entrepreneurship has been inwardly focused. You know, a lot of the big businesses and big corporates and industry, which we're seeing. And that's at the, uh, you know, the, the, the current growth is on the back of, of, uh, of a lot of that because we are a big nation. We are big consumers of our own services and of our own goods. Uh, but clearly the appetite is, is for much more. It remains to be seen how this is taken abroad. I feel that much like the trajectory of Japan, I think what went abroad was uh, uh, something which was uh, innovations which were, you know, culture unspecific, you know, innovations which would really be more human 
uh, centric, more humane centric even, you know, where you people are, are actually addressing the needs and wants of, of people around the globe. And those things will obviously uh, uh, be, be what will leave the shores of India according, according to me. In terms of uh, the cultural nuances, uh, you know, I think the cultural nuances for that India own are in some ways already out there, uh, which is a spiritual spiritual factor we, we, and, and so on. But also I think the, the ability is, uh, of the Jugad mindset, you know, the ability to, to have that uh, um, thinking that we are, anything is possible, uh, if we put our minds to it, and people, um, the Indian Indian uh, way of working, of course, we are very very hardworking people. Uh, we are used to working with very little resources, so a lot of the innovations that you will probably see will probably come from a zone of lack rather than plenty. But it's an interesting space because lack and not having enough is great for innovation. But when that mindset is being met with abundance, we'll have to see how some of these ideas can really be scaled up into something amazing. Uh, as to what those trends should, would be, uh, I think the cultural ones are definitely gonna be there, uh, but certainly the mass scale ones will be, I think difficult to tell apart from the innovations from around the world. I think you're gonna see both things happening. But I, what I mean also by the Indian cultural uh, uh, sort of um, export that probably is going to be seen more is the, the the craftsmanship, you know, the handmade elements of what we, the master craftsmen who have actually produced, woven, innovated, carved, and so on. There is a huge movement within the country itself to embrace all that with a lot of pride. There are there, there's a lot of funding going in to cultivate that. And I think that's, that, is, that is something going to be uniquely Indian, which is definitely going to be seen uh, you know, uh, in, in, around the world as we, as we move along. Again, drawing a parallel from, with Japan. You know, so Japan exported uh, their own innovations, which were agnostic of any country. But at the same time, as the, as the, as the culture became you know, more confident, it also exported its cultural nuances. And, and that got absorbed and, and, and integrated into so many different movements. I mean, we see that in architecture, we see that in design, we see that in graphic design and all sorts of things. So I do believe that that would be a, a fair comparison to make. You know. you know, as I mentioned that uh, uh, we are both uh, very uh, rooted, rooted to our roots. And at the same time, we are completely exposed to what's going on in the world and very accepting of, of, of those things as well. So it's a, it, in the way I have seen things evolve in this country is that it's been a very organic process. No one is overthinking anything. You know, uh, you know the world is just going ahead and, and evolving. Having said that, I mean, if you just look at the number of, I mean, look at the Bollywood films that we have, they've seen a huge shift uh, it, the volume, of course, remains high. We also see OTT uh, platforms see extremely rich, um, you know, contribution being made on you know, amazing kind of um, films being and programs being put out on OTT. They all have influences uh, from the West for sure, but at the same time, they are so uniquely Indian. The language, the uh, the um, uh, the nuances, the rawness, some of some of sometimes extremely raw subjects and very very hard hitting, violent subjects, which are very unlike Bollywood. Bollywood is all about you know living in a world of a dream world and where everything, of course, always works out in the end. But you see a lot of uh, cultural storytelling which is coming out, which is way more complex, completely Indian, but you see a lot of influences. And I do think that, that you're just gonna see much more of that. Uh, 
there are going to be these stories which people will be able to relate to around the world. Like you see a lot of cinema, like for example, I mean, what we see in Korea, Koreans, Korean, uh, uh, you know, programs are hugely popular here. Okay. Uh, again, it's, so it's an interesting uh, cultural nuance where Indians actually are drawn towards something from, from Korea less than they're drawn to uh, from the West. So there is a there is a whole pull towards the East as well. So the influences are there, but we are making our own kitchen. You know, we are making our own hot pot or whatever. It's so you're going to see a lot of that. Uh, you're going to see a lot of stories, which I think people, once they start unpeeling the Indian culture, because it is really, it's a very complex culture. It's very, very difficult. You know, like you said, there's a clash between the West and the East. It's, you know, there is a clash within the country itself. I mean, we are, we are people who spent at least 14 big, you know, sort of uh, important languages, uh, the, the, the huge variety of foods, uh, the way we dress, the way it's all different from the North to the South. Uh, so there is a lot, that itself is like a melting pot that's already happening. People are beginning to take a lot more positions about politics, about uh, you know social sh changes, etc., which we didn't find before. This is to answer your question about you know are the are the youth actually expressing themselves more? They are in, in very interesting ways. So I would say that um, uh, watch the space. It's going to be interesting. I would say in India, you will see it coming more from the private sector. Uh, for example, the, the big media houses may want to actually do some of that as people are becoming smarter about how to market and position brand India and you know uh, these, these products abroad. So, uh, but it would have to have some help from the government in order for it to see this, the scale and acceptance. So I would say yes, but it's a little bit far, further away than, than what I would like to, to see. Well, you're, you're right about that. I mean, a uh, lot of the economy is largely inward looking. I think it, a lot of the economy is also, uh, You know, uh, especially the international aspect of it was has grown uh, on the sweatshop, uh, you know, background. There is a huge awareness internally amongst organizations about that, and there is a there is a tremendous amount of effort, uh, and this has been been there for a while now, to 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 shift the needle towards actually moving away from the, the sweatshop orientation, I'm talking the, the tech world, to much more of intellectual innovation uh, and, and, and that zone, uh, which is, uh, which I, which I know for a fact is gaining traction. It's a, it's a country in transition. And I don't think that you will immediately see, uh, you know, the, uh, under the surface where the wheels are clearly turning. And I think people are extremely aware of that and extremely aware that they are sitting on an, an amazing opportunity, especially with what's going on in the world to become exactly what you're saying, which is a, a great, a great, a, a hub of innovation of not just, not just being the supplier of what is, uh, what is needed around the world, but actually contributor in, in, a, in the largest in the most meaningful uh, sense of the word. Uh, so um, I would say it's a transition, there's greater awareness. Uh, there's also, as I said, in the sense of abundance, there's much more money available, which means that you can, and there's a fair, huge amount of growth within India, but if India is looking for the kind of growth it is, uh, then it can only look to expand in the manner in which you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, I have, I walked into the industry when I was pretty much one of two women who would eventually start on her own. Uh, so it's, it, it, it was and continues to be uh, a male bastion. Um, it's, uh, so it's, yes, it's a, 
it's been a very strange and difficult journey. And also I, 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 I come from a, a, a graphic design, branding design background. I study in the National Institute of Design. Uh, so for me, I never saw the world of advertising or creativity from the lens that advertising people saw it, uh, which was just as a very focused sort of a, a narrow definition of creativity and communication. For me, it was a, always a much wider canvas. Um, so, you know, I was born as a designer into a very, very analog age. And uh, it was also a socialist era where there was really nothing available, no real products or services to sell as they are as right now. Uh, I thought advertising would give me a certain kind of a background, which it certainly did, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, but I always maintained one foot in the design zone. And what I mean by that is that um, I was always hungry to, to know more. If there was nobody to teach me, I always made sure somehow I managed to learn that skill myself uh, because I really wanted to. I never just learned um, only from my desk job. I learned from, my, from people. I learned from travel. I learned from books, which are not necessarily just advertising or design books. So to me, whilst I, that was great, and I was fortunate enough to have amazing mentors, very inspirational people. But I think uh, I always look to life for a bigger inspiration. Uh, I was, I think, just a little different in terms of, oh, um, how should I put it? I just could not think within uh, prescriptive boundaries of the way an industry should be. I just found myself always shifting vantage points and looking at scenarios very differently. And therefore, the solutions that I would have be very different, which is why it was very hard for me to be in a job for a long time because uh, jobs came, you know, the, the advertising job just came in with sort of a predefined roles and pre uh, uh, and expectations which were pretty much um, also predefined, you know. And whilst that was that worked for me for a while, it didn't work for me entirely. So I think I therefore started something on my on my own. Um, and I think what kept me going was that we, 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 and in this avatar, we are 25 years old. So to sustain, uh, uh, especially in the kind of world that uh, you bring up a design company for that much time, certainly requires resilience. Uh, certainly requires a lot of belief in yourself because uh, if you don't believe in yourself, believe me, there's nobody out there who's going to believe in you. Uh, everybody out there is always going to be there to maybe uh, bring you down a bit, but no one necessarily wants to push you up. So, uh, and that may come in in swings. There are, you know, when 2008 happened, you know, the business completely uh, collapsed. So to actually revive it from nothing required that resilience, required that belief, required a lot of um, different approaches uh, as to how to innovate. And I re-innovated. Uh, uh, the organization itself moved much more, moved away from advertising to embracing the world of communication much more holistically. Uh, we looked at the world of design much more seriously. Uh, we looked at research. We looked at a uh, lot, lot more strategic orientation. We collaborated with people around the world uh, for different, uh, uh, you know, expertise, uh, different focuses, and also bringing in different skill sets. Uh, within within the country, so which we managed to do quite successfully. Um, so I think that my form of leadership, uh, personally, is that um, encouraging people to have a life. Don't just look at your career. Don't just look at the vocabulary uh, that is being offered by your your peers. The exposure and experience of peers. Don't just want to gain recognition from your industry alone, that's fine. I mean, that's part of it, but don't let, let that be the only game on the table. You know, there's a much larger uh, uh, play that's happening in the world. And you need to be, you need to participate much more in that. You need to learn from it that much more uh, in order to 
be a creative person. So I encourage my team to, to do that. I also don't, um, we, we spoke about hierarchy. I believe in flat structures and I've always believed that. I believe in, um, in encouraging people to, uh, to think differently for you know, also. I had a designer who actually opened the Bangalore office uh, for us, you know, that I, I felt that she had the, the, she could possibly have the spark to do that, gave her the, the, an open field to do it. And she did, she did, she did very, very, do it, did it very successfully. So for me, the individual and their talent matters much more than their uh, position and the, the number of years of experience. Uh, so that is my personal a way of, uh, of leading. I also believe that we are partners to our clients. We are not people on, we're not hired guns alone. I mean, we really need to, we need to be contributors. We must be seen as contributors and that's very important. And so we want to work with a lot of pride in what we do, in uh, the ideas we have to offer. And because we tend to work as equals, as partners uh, with our clients, we find that they tend to stick with us longer. They respect us that much more. Um, so that's uh, that's another aspect of of our DNA, which uh, which comes from, I guess, a certain personal leadership uh, perspective. Of course, being a woman has not been easy at all, uh, at all, and it continues to. I just sort of, I just see it as an occupational hazard. I don't particularly dwell on it. I, I'm not driven by angst about it. Okay, this is just the way it is. So I just have to find a way around it in order to do what I want. The work itself is gender unspecific. You know, I mean, it's just about doing good work, being creative, and making sure that uh, you take your team along and grow them as much as you are growing a client's business. Absolutely, I think that um, is, you know part of the deal of, of our company is uh, because I, I, as I mentioned that for me it was always a shifting vantage point, and uh, you know and, and I think really what we what I'm talking about is design thinking because design thinking now has become so sort of a, such a fashionable thing to own and talk about and I, what I didn't realize that I probably intrinsically had that and so a lot of solutions we offer our clients um, not necessarily the brief, addressing just the brief they've, they've come to us with, we far surpass that. Because of the ability to think beyond the, the, the pre, the, the, you know, the sort of the, the, the presupposed the structure of the industry and also the expectation from the client. So we break that uh, a lot. And I, uh, I don't think the advertising industry per se is doing enough of that, although it at some level realizes it, but because these have become behemoths, which are sort of completely been so rigidly structured, it's very hard to change that uh, uh, that DNA in, in, in the industry. But I think people who would probably uh, start afresh uh, have an opportunity to think differently. So I don't even call myself an advertising agency uh, because it again narrow casts me. You know, I see myself as a as a design and communication consultancy. And that, that, that just opens up a new way of thinking. In fact, I have to tell you that we don't hire people from advertising uh, because people from advertising, again, come with presupposed solutions uh, even before <laughs> there's a problem, it's, it, especially here. So as again, I don't know about, what, about what's happening in your country, especially here. So I, find that I, I found that we became far more creative, productive, ethical even in the kind of offerings that we started to uh, ha, you know to, to have for our, for our clients but it's a it's really creativity abounds and I think uh, the more we look around for inspiration and the more we institutionalize I would imagine some of these things would help a lot. I mean, it helped me that I actually, for a time, I was living in West Africa. I was teaching children. I was uh, you know, teaching them art and English. And I think that all of that exposure helped me a lot as well, you know. Um, you know so I think maybe it was good to have been a bit of a hippie at, at a certain age in my life to, to open up different, 
ways of thinking. Most definitely, we're seeing that uh, the hunger amongst uh, amongst the, the youth uh, is in order to embrace creative world and redefining the creative world and the creative services or the creative arenas in which they want to participate in. Uh, so they're not looking at it as a service. They're looking at it as something that they, they want in their lives. They want to be part of. And as it happens, they also, that partnership needs to be fruitful and it will grow. So clearly there's a redefinition of, of uh, that entire zone of creativity. A lot of it is moving into the, the startup zone for sure. Uh, indeed, it's, uh, which is not to say that you don't see creativity being attracted uh, to the industries, to the design industry, to advertising industry. We also, also see, see that. Uh, they're the happiest though, when they, they are uh, involved in a role which is multifaceted. Uh, so the older structures are no longer enough to keep them satisfied or, or happy. Um, thank you, Ms. Yes. I think, uh, I think all the questions were answered and it was really, really kind of you to take time out again. Uh, from our side, from Bellinker as well as Berlin School, we just want to thank you. And uh, we hope we have a chance to meet up with you once again in Bombay and I'm sure they will take a lot of learnings back from you. Thank you. Sure. Let's see how this goes. Thank you so much. Thank you for asking such interesting questions as well. But I really hope that I was able to give you some insightful answers. Okay then, thank you so much.